In this video, I wanna show you how to mix pop vocals in three different styles. I wanna show you how to mix a pop vocal that's bright and shiny and has some spatial processing, similar to like you'd hear in The weekend. And then I wanna talk about a pop vocal that is a little bit softer, more dynamic, more mid forward. And it's something that you'd hear in like a pop ballad from Olivia Rodrigo. And then I wanna close this video out by doing a super dry, super punchy vocal right up the middle, which is something that you'd hear from hip hop artists a lot like Drake or 21 Savage or J. Cole, or even some like bedroom pop people who wanna sing super soft and dynamic and then they just want that dry vocal that's right up the middle. So we're gonna talk about all of those different vocal chains today. I'm also gonna make all of those presets available absolutely for free. So we're gonna be using Waves plugins throughout this video. So if you use Waves plugins, you can go check out the Studioverse profile that I'm gonna link below and you can just download their Studio Rack software for free. And essentially you can just drag in any of these presets and any others that we make for make pop music in the future absolutely for free just for my profile down there. Before we jump in, I do wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, which is gonna be Waves Audio. I've been using Waves for years and we've been really, really wanting to make presets for you guys that we could either give away or maybe sell in the future. And I think the easiest way of doing that is by using Studioverse with that Studio Rack plugin because I can essentially load up entire chains and then you can just drag them in with one easy click. It's super, super, super simple. So when they reached out to sponsor this content, I was more than down to do it. I love Waves, I've been using them forever. And this really just makes it really easy for you guys to follow along on our videos and to download these presets. So thank you so much to Waves for sponsoring. If you wanna check out any of the plugins that we use in this video, you can head to waves.com. You can buy all of their plugins on perpetual licenses. They also have some insane bundles. And since Black Friday is coming up, they're running crazy deals all through November. So if you wanna get some plugins, you can get them heavily discounted. If you're more of a subscription person like I am, you can actually download Waves Creative Access. For just over 20 bucks a month, you can get every single Waves plugin, which means that any chains that you ever download from Studioverse, which is their preset sharing program that they have, you can basically just open them right in your DAW and you'll be good to go. If you don't need all of the plugins, they also have a step below that, which is like $12.50 a month and you get 110 plugins for that. So depending on if you like licenses or if you like subscriptions, they definitely have something for you. So if you wanna be able to download these presets that we're gonna have and you wanna be able to follow exactly step-by-step, step, go to waves.com and check it out. We have a link in the description. Thank you so much to Waves for sponsoring this video. We really, really appreciate it. And thank you to all you guys for always being so supportive of our sponsors. Let's dive in and let's check out some vocal mixes. Here's what we're starting with. This is what my dry vocal sounds like. We're gonna start with that super shiny, kind of bright pop vocal. So right now, let me show you what we're working with. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation, I've lost hope, can you save me? So right off the bat, I'm hearing that we are a little bit low mid forward. I'm definitely gonna wanna clear some of that up. And I'm definitely gonna wanna make this a little bit brighter, a little bit shinier, and I want this to have a lot more space. So to start out, I'm pretty much gonna start any vocal with just some tuning, just to kind of put it in place. A lot of the time, if you're working with more kind of synthesized uh, sessions like this, Everything is perfectly in tune, so when the vocal's not perfectly in tune, it can kind of give you this like really weird dissonance. So I like to have this a little bit quicker, so I'm gonna go probably right around here, and then I just need to set the key. And for this song, we're in A natural minor. So I can just click that, and now I should be good to go. Now we're gonna have some tuning. I'll play around with this for a second. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation, I've lost hope, can you save me? So if you download this preset, just make sure that you go in and that you change the scale or the key, um, just because that's how it's gonna work the best. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna start to shape this vocal, and typically, no matter what style of vocal I'm mixing, what genre I'm mixing in, what the vocalist sounds like, I'm always starting with EQ, compression, and then a little bit of DSing. So one of the easiest ways to get all of that done and just one fail swoop is by using something like a channel strip. So Waves has a really, really good one that we can kind of use from Sheps. And so what we're gonna do with this is just start to shape the vocal. So I'm immediately gonna do a little bit of a uh, high pass filter just to kind of get some of the rumble out of my voice. Anytime I hit a mic stand, any like plosives that make it through a pop filter, this is a really, really, really good way to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna do some of this stuff in solo and then we'll pop it back in the mix. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation, I've lost hope, can you save me? 
So I'm adding a little bit of saturation. I'm doing a little bit of filtering and I close that resonance a little bit just so it'll kind of gradually build up to that. Um, and that's sounding pretty good. That's already shaping the vocal. The next thing that I wanna do is add a little bit of DSing. So I'm gonna pop this closer to like 7K, which is where my vocal starts to have some S's. And then I'm just gonna dial this threshold back until it's catching them. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation, I've lost hope, can you save me? And I'm gonna do DSing now because as I compress, those S's will really start to come through. And I don't wanna go too, too crazy because I can always do this a little bit later as well. So I'm just kind of capturing those initial transient S's just so as we start to EQ and compress, we're not paying attention to those so much. The next thing I wanna do is start to EQ. So this is where I'm really gonna sculpt out some of those low mids and start popping in some highs. So we'll go ahead and we'll start with the top end. I'm gonna turn this all the way up to 20K because as I boost air in a pop vocal, this is really where I like to start kind of having it shine through. And this is kind of where I'll pop it in the mix just so as we EQ, we can make sure that we're doing the right thing. Could you come and hold me? Let's go ahead and let's do some mids. I wanna turn it on parametric so I can control the cue. They have a wide band, they have a narrow notch, and I'm just gonna turn it on this so I can control my cue because I'm gonna go pretty wide. And for frequency range, we're probably looking right around like 1800. That's that really kind of telephonic, nasally piercing register. So let me solo it so you can kind of hear. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation, I've lost hope, can you save me? Pull a little bit of low mid out, I'm gonna turn this to parametric as well. And I'm gonna have it a little bit wider than right up the middle. And in terms of frequency, I'm gonna go to like probably 250. That's where my voice starts to get really kind of built up. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for- Let's hear that in the mix now. Could you come and hold me? We're getting there. We're already sculpting this thing. Let's do some compression. So for my first stage of compression, I like using FET. It's a little bit faster. It's a little bit less colored that, like, than Opto would be. So we're going to do this. We're going to have a pretty fast attack and a pretty fast release. And for ratio, I'm going to leave this at like four to one, similar to what you'd find in like an 1176. They also have a 76 plugin that I use all the time. Uh, but I wanted to save rack space and wanted to show you guys how to use a channel strip. So let's dial this in so we can really see what's going on. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation, I've lost hope. Can you save me? Okay, so I'm gonna dial this back just a little bit. I'm compressing anywhere between like 3 and 6 dB of gain reduction, and I'm just using this trim right here just to make it a little bit quieter. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. As I make these presets too, I'll have it available where you have these macros on the side that you can really control things like air as we add reverb and delay. But for right now, I just want to dial in a pretty clean mix to start with. So with that said, let's go ahead and let's pop in another compressor. I like to do what's called serial compression, which just means that you're going to use at least two, sometimes even three compressors. And the reason that I do that is just so I don't have to hit one way too hard. So we're going to turn this all the way up to flat. And then I'm essentially just gonna dial this in so we get anywhere between like two and five dB of gain reduction. And the 2A is an opto compressor. It's a little bit slower. It'll kind of make that vocal super smooth and it'll kind of give it some of those mids back. Could you come and hold me? I'm looking for salvation. I've lost hope. Can you save me? Could you come and hold me? That's feeling pretty good to me. What we're trying to do with compression is we're trying to make it where all of these peaks in the vocal and these valleys in the vocal start to kind of level out. So what we're doing is we're smoothing out those big transient peaks or those big spikes because as we can smooth those out, we can lift the entire volume of the vocal and that gives us a lot of perceived loudness without hitting our meter super, super hard. So what happens when you have a uh, vocal that's way too dynamic is it's just kind of hitting the meters, especially in a dense pop arrangement like this, it's just never really gonna shine. 
my kind of rule of thumb is the bigger the arrangement is, the more compression that you're probably going to need to get that vocal to sit right up front. If you're doing a ballad like we do later, you can smooth off a little bit. But let's go ahead and let's do a little bit of EQ. We don't need too, too much, but whenever I like to kind of get nitty gritty, that's when I'll pull in some of these parametric EQs like this. So we're just going to use Q10 just in case we need all these bands. I don't think we're going to that. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to hold me that I know. I'm looking for salvation. I've lost hope. Can you save me? Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to hold me that I know. I'm looking for salvation. I've lost hope. Can you save me? That's pretty good. There was just a couple little weird resonant peaks that I wanted to handle that were kind of bothering me a little bit, but I feel pretty good about that. Let's go ahead and do some multi-band compression. This is one of my secret kind of uh, weapons when it comes to mixing pop vocals is using multi-band compression is a good way to kind of add in some excitement um, because as you start doing things dynamically, I can basically pop a lot of air into this vocal, but what I can do is I can tell it to close down when there's too much coming through. So when there's things like sil sibilance or when I go into the top of my register, it's not going to let as much air come through, but when I'm in that lower register and I need some of that top end to lift it, it's going to kind of open up. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this right here. We're going to open like almost 3 dB. And then I'm going to set this range to like negative four. So it'll just start to kind of like level out as we get to the areas where it doesn't need to be. So you'll hear it brighten up and then you'll hear it start to clamp down. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to hold me that I know. I'm looking for salvation. I've lost hope. Can you save me? I'm also gonna use this right around my mid-range because for me, that mid-range can get kind of boomy just where my voice is sitting in the song. So I just want it to squeeze up just a little bit if I start to get too much into my chest. And I also wanna add some of that brightness that doesn't get super harsh and sibilant. So let me show you what it sounds like with and without this. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to hold me that I know. I'm looking for salvation. It kind of just lifts it to the top of the mix, and that's really where I think things start to shine because as it can lift it, um, it'll just sit on top of everything rather than just being a little bit muddy and a little bit buried. So multi-band compression is a really good way to do that because if I were to just boost that top end of air on something like an EQ, then as I have some of those harsher notes or some of that harsher sibilance, it's also gonna boost that. But with that compressor, it'll essentially compress down on those parts and it'll allow the air to come through whenever it's needed. Um, so now we just need to do a little bit of our final DSing. I like their plug-in sibilance just because to me DSers can get so funky so quick. So all we're going to do is basically just play around with this threshold in this range until it basically feels like we have enough S's without stomping on them. Could you come and hold me? Just sing the holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation. I've lost hope. Can you save me? Let's hear this in solo. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation. I've lost hope. Can you save me? That might be a little aggressive. Let's dial this range back a little bit. Let's hear that. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. That's feeling pretty good. What we need to do now is we need to start getting some space in there. So this is where I think, this is really where I was surprised by how good the Studioverse plugin is. And this is why we wanted to use Studioverse and Studio Rack for the presets is because as I set up things in my DAW and I start to use sends and returns and routing and stuff like that, it is really, really hard for you to copy that unless you use Cubase and you have all of my same plugins and can just pull up a session. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this parallel split function and this thing is killer. So all I'm gonna do is leave one open because that's basically my dry return back into the vocal. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start playing around with some of these uh, extra little parallel extensions. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna dial in a reverb and I start with my kind of longer, washier reverb just because that's what needs the most space. And then I'll kind of start to do other things like delay and modulation from there. So typically, if I'm using something like this, um, I'm probably gonna have it in between like two and three, three and a half seconds for a long, washy reverb. If you're in something that goes algorithmically on like halls, chambers, plates, whatever, um, typically a plate, a chamber, a hall, or some kind of cathedral is going to be good for your longer, washier vocals. So 
I just need to make sure that we have this direct turned off. I'm gonna turn early reflections down a bit and we can start to play a, a play around with this. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation. I've lost hope. Can you save me? So one thing that I just noticed is I have this on a mono vocal. I should have mentioned earlier, but when you're using Studio Rack, I basically always use it in stereo because as I use stereo effects like doublers, reverb, delay, I want that to be stereo. So I'm going to use this as stereo, but I messed up and I put this on a mono vocal, but Cubase 13 just came out and they have a brand new configuration so I can just turn this to stereo. So I just needed to swap that vocal from mono to stereo on the vocal track, which is what I did. So now let's go ahead and let's hear what this reverb is sounding like. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation. I've lost. I'm gonna go ahead and use some EQ right here just to sculpt this a little bit. Could you come and hold me? Maybe not quite that much. And then what I like to do after a reverb is I'm gonna go ahead and add in just some filtering. And this is essentially doing the Abbey Road technique. So I'm just gonna open this one up as a, I'm basically gonna do a high pass and a low pass filter. I'm gonna cut off everything in like 400 all the way up to like, I don't know, maybe 5K. Could you come and hold me? And that's essentially just gonna sculpt that reverb. So as I blend that into my vocal, um, it just feels a little bit more controlled. And then if you really wanna get crazy, you can basically do some kind of like uh, side chaining. So you can do that within this plugin, which I'll do just a little bit of. I'm gonna turn it on side chain mode. And then I'm essentially just gonna set this so it'll kind of squeeze down on that reverb once the vocals are going. And then once that vocal loosens up a little bit, it's gonna kind of let that reverb pop through just a hair more. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation, I've lost hope. Can you save me? And that's just gonna clean it up just a hair. I will let some of these low mids back through just cause it's a little bit, it's just a little thin right now. That feels pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and let's add another one. This is going to be our delay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do H delay and this is gonna be a quarter note delay. So let's go ahead and let's sync this to quarter. I'm gonna turn the analog off cause I don't want that hiss. And let's go ahead and hear. Could you come and hold me? 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 I'm gonna set this to ping pong. I'm gonna turn the feedback down. This is essentially how many times that will repeat. And then I'm just gonna filter this out pretty heavily, just so uh, it doesn't kind of get in the way of our lead vocal. So this should probably Could be good. You come and hold me? And it's really, really like loud right now. However, we can kind of dial that in a little bit later. If you want to do the compression thing, we can kind of do that again. Um, it's just the same thing. I'm going to set this to sidechain mode. I'm going to turn the threshold up, turn the mix down just a hair so it doesn't completely sidechain it. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation. I've lost hope. Can you save me? Let's Could try. you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. Cool. We can go ahead and turn this way down. This is how you blend the return signal back down. So we're gonna do that. And then I just wanna add a little bit of reverb just so it's not a super dry delay. And then that's probably fine. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation. I've lost hope. Now we're gonna add a doubler because I always do some kind of like stereo doubling. And for this, we're gonna use the doubler four. There's a preset that I use all the time on our channel called doubler four voices. But the only thing we wanna do is take out that direct signal. We don't need anything coming up the middle because we already have the dry vocal. And then we'll just blend this as the taste. So I'm gonna bring it all the way down. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation, I've lost hope. Can you and then the last thing that I like to do is I like to do some kind of eighth note delay. So I'm going to turn it on an eighth and I don't want this one to be ping pong. This can be right up the middle. I'm going to filter it out, turn off analog, turn the feedback up just a hair. And I'm going to turn the rate as well up for some modulation. And let's kind of see what we get. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for salvation. I've lost hope. Can you save me? Blend that way down. That's just gonna add a little bit of slap back to kind of smooth it out. And let's hear this in the mix and then we can adjust some of these uh, actual send returns. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know. I'm looking for 
salvation I've lost hope Can you save me? Now I want to do one more thing and that is just add basically one last EQ after everything. And what this is gonna do is this lets me boost a little bit of low end while I can attenuate some of those mids and I'm gonna boost the air just a little bit. So we get something that feels super bright and super modern without being too kind of like mid forward, too crispy. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna dial in some of these settings and then we'll kind of use that as a starting point. Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know I'm looking for salvation, I've lost hope Can you save me? Now, that feels pretty good to me, let's hear it before and after Could you come and hold me? You're the closest thing to holy that I know I'm looking for salvation, I've lost hope Can you save me? And there we go. That feels like a good start. Like I said, in the preset that you download, I will have macros. So if you want to control things like reverbs, delays, doublers, uh, you know, add air, take air away, add compression, those will all be on the macro. So you can really kind of create them as your own. But that to me is a pretty perfect starting chain for a kind of really bright, really spacey kind of pop vocal like you'd hear from the weekend. Let's go ahead and let's move on to the ballad example. Let's listen to the raw vocal that we have for this ballad. It is just super dry right up the middle. You stopped returning all of my text Now you go out with all your new friends I wish that I could say that I would so let's go ahead and let's start this. I'm again gonna start with a little bit of tuning, but for this one, we're not gonna go nearly as abrasive. We kind of just want this one to basically lightly touch everything. So I'm just gonna set some settings. So here's what we have. As you can see, we're a little bit slower on the transition and the speed, and then I'm just in E major. So again, if you download this, just make sure that you swap the scale or you can take off the tuning entirely. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna add a little bit of character to kind of give me that really mid forward, um, just kind of almost vintage vibe. So I'm gonna use this uh, Red 3751. It's basically like a console emulation. And I'm not going to go as step by step as I did in the first example, just so we can kind of speed up time. But every time I create a vocal chain, it's a very similar process. So here are the settings that we ended on. I ended up going to the Red 51 channel, and then I am just kind of messing with the tone high and low here. And that's basically just going to give it a little bit more of an analog feel. You stopped returning. That feels pretty good to me because this vocal was just tracked through a uh, Loudon Audio LA320 straight into an Apogee Duet 3, so there was no preamp uh, outside of the interface. There was no compression. There was no nothing. So I wanted to add a little bit more character, and then we're going back to that... Uh, you know, Shep's bundle that we talked about earlier. But for this time, we're going straight into the 1173. So again, I'm just gonna add a little bit of EQ. And as I EQ, I just kind of pay attention to ranges. So if it's muddy or if it's like really boomy, I'm gonna take out some of like 150 to 250, 300. If it feels really kind of boxy and stale in the mids, I'm gonna check out that 300 to 5, 600 area. If it feels a little bit kind of nasally and telephonic, I'm gonna check out like 800 hertz to 1.5 thousand hertz. Um, and then other than that, like as soon as you get into that like really, really abrasive sharpness, that's probably two to 4K. And as you get into things that are going to be um, more like hiss, more sibilance, that's probably gonna be like that five to 10K. And then above 10K is really just normally kind of air. So. You don't want a ton of that in this. You're gonna want something a little bit more mid forward, but let's dial this in. You stopped returning all of my text. Now you go out with all your new friends. I wish that I could say that I wish you the best, but now that I know that you're on to the next. You stopped returning all of my text. Now you go out with all your new friends. I wish that I could say that I wish you the best, but now that I know that you're on to the next. That's feeling pretty good. We're just starting to tame some of those mids. Now it's time to do a little bit of compression. So we're gonna go quite a bit lighter than we did on the last one. I don't need as much compression, but I'm just gonna go with the 1176 and we're gonna dial this thing right in. You stopped your turn. All Let's dial this output down. You stopped your turn. All of my text Now you go out With all your new friends I wish that I could say that I will 
And as you can see, we're really just using that to kind of capture some of those peaks. That's really all we need from that. I'm not going to compress this thing too much. Same thing with a 2A. I just want to kind of get this a little bit compressed. You stopped returning all of my text. Now you go out with all your new friends. I wish that I could say that I wish you the best, but now that I know that you're on to the next. That's perfect. We're going to go back to sibilance again like we did last time just to dial in some uh, some DSing basically. Here are the settings I ended up with. Just threshold and range are going to depend based on your gain staging. You stopped returning all of my text. Now let's go to this parallel split. This is really what I want to kind of show you guys for this one. This one's going to be much more simple than the original. I want something that feels a little bit more authentic, a little bit more organic. So I'm just going to dial in a plate reverb because to me, that's a really, really good reverb for this kind of ballad style. Olivia Rodrigo kind of goes pretty wet with her reverb. So that's what I'm going to do. But as you download this, you can easily just back that off if you want a drier vocal. No big deal. Let's go ahead and select plate D. You stopped returning. Let's go ahead and do what we did earlier, just with a little bit of filtering. I'm just gonna use this one just to, I don't know, do something a little bit different, but it's the same thing. Basically high pass, low pass, Abbey Road, filter it out. You just want it to essentially uh, control where this reverb is happening. And then I want to do one more send where I'm just adding a little bit of like tape slap back. So they have a really good tape reel under here from the J37. And then we're going to start with a preset. So we're just going to start with this vocal warmth. It is male vocal warmth. And then I'm just going to change around a couple different settings. I want this to be a little bit shorter. And then I basically just want this feedback to be quite a bit higher. I'm going to filter this out a little bit. You stopped returning all of my texts Now you go out with all your friends I wish that I could say that I wish you the best But now that I know that you're on we're just blending that in because that can help kind of put that vocal inside of the mix rather than really having it be on top So using things like those slapback delays is a really good way to just kind of add a little bit of uh, space in that vocal without it being super super wet. So even if we kind of muted this one you stopped returning all of my text. Now you go out with all your new friends. I wish that I could say that I wish you And then the last thing that I want to do is I'm actually gonna add an instance of that J37 on my bus just completely last because I want to use this less as a delay and more as kind of just tape saturation. I'm going to start with this preset. It's called Master uh, High Frequency Smoothing and there we go. High Frequency Smoothing and Round Bottom. I want to change this to the 811 tape just because I know that I love that tape and then we'll just kind of play around and see how we feel. You stopped returning all of my text. Now you go out with all your new friends. I wish that I could say that That's just going to kind of give it a little bit of extra uh, tape saturation. So now as we listen to this vocal without this, here's what the vocal sounds like completely raw. You stopped returning all of my text. Now you go out with all your new friends. I wish that I could say that I wish you the best, but now that I know that you're on to the next. You stopped returning all of my text. As you can see, it's a little bit more simple than the pop one that we did earlier, but we're really focusing on having less top end, less sizzle, and we really want those mids to be kind of controlled, and then we want that reverb to be kind of wide, kind of washy. What you could also do is you could add something like center on this uh, reverb, and we could essentially just take out the center so it kind of side chains it to the middle of the stereo field. You stopped returning all of my text. 
And that really helps that dry vocal just kind of cut a little bit. So I'm actually going to do that. And then, like I said, as you download these presets, if you want, there will be macros over here that will all be filled out that you can really just use to sculpt us however you want. But that's feeling really good for a pop ballad vocal start. So I'm going to leave that as is. Let's move on to the dry hip hop vocal. Let's dive into our last example. This is going to be the dry hip hop vocal. With that said, I needed to record vocals for this example. Please do not laugh at me. I know I do not sound like Drake or 21 Savage, but it still stands exactly what you need to do to process this vocal. I just had to say that to save myself a little bit of public embarrassment. Let's go ahead and let's check this out. I'm from the six, I carry a stick. Security detail all look like John Wick. My wrist is an ocean, the VV's on drip. My pen is a potion, the labels all blitz. Do me like the rose and so as you can see, it's it's pretty muddy. It's pretty mid forward, especially with such a bassy production. So let's go ahead and let's start adding some stuff. Again, we're gonna start with some tuning. For this, I'm tuning a bit harder. I'm actually gonna tune this similar to how Drake would. So here's what I ended up with. I'm leaving this in chromatic because it's kind of atonal and I have a super fast speed and a super fast note transition. I'm from the six, I carry a stick. Security detail all look like John Wick. My wrist is an ocean and VVs on drip. My pen is a po now we're going back to the Shep's uh, Omni channel that we used a little bit earlier in our first example. And again, for this one, I'm just gonna dial in the preamp, some DSing, some EQ, and some compression. I'm gonna do this one off camera to save a little bit of time, but I'll still recap exactly what I do. Here's what I ended up with. So for this one, we have some saturation happening. Again, we're doing some filtering very similar to the first one we did. And then I have a little bit of gating happening just to cut out any time that my vocals stop. We have that DSer happening. We're only using one again. We're not even using both of these. And then as you can see, we're adding a little bit of top end actually at seven and a half thousand. So we're actually going a lot lower than we did earlier. We need just a bit of top lift, not just air. And then we're adding some mids and we're really controlling this low end. And then uh, again, like a four to one compression ratio, basically doing what an 1176 would do. Let's peep this. I'm from the six, I carry a stick. Security detail all look like John Wick. My wrist is an ocean of VVs on trip. My pen is a potion, the labels all blitz. Do me like the rose and get close to the top. So that already is setting it up pretty good. Let's go ahead and add our 2A just so we can get a little bit of extra compression. Here's what we ended up with for the 2A. I'm from the six, I carry a stick. Security detail all look like John Wick. My wrist is an ocean of VVs all drip. My pen is a... We're going to do that same C4 trick that we did earlier just because, like I said, it's a great way to add in air and control mids. And uh, I find that doing this dynamically just lets you get a little bit more precise. So here's what I ended up with. I'm basically just lifting a lot of these mids and then I'm just kind of letting that clamp down when it needs to. I'm from the six, I carry a stick. Security detail all look like John Wick. My wrist is an ocean of VVs all drip. My pen is a potion, the labels all blitz. Do me like the rose and get close to the top and then flip. It's honestly making me sick. My neck is still frozen, I feel like LeBron with fortune. As you can tell, it's gonna brighten it up without it getting super, super harsh and sibilant. Again, I wanna add a little bit of EQ just to notch out a little bit of weird stuff. The EQ, like I said earlier, I would just follow the kind of basic mindset of EQing. I would almost never copy EQ one for one because you're never gonna have my voice with the same microphone on the same production singing in the same range with everything being the same. So just kind of follow what I said earlier about how to EQ and then you should be good. For this specific example, all I did was basically added a little bit of a high pass and then I'm scooping out some of those boxy mids, scooping out that kind of like piercing 2K and that really sibilant kind of like five and a half, 6K right here. And then I don't think the top is really lifting much of anything like 0.3. I'm from the six, I carry a stick. Security detail all look like John Wick. My wrist is an ocean. So now let's add that sibilance because we do have some DSing to control here. And again, I'm just going to use the same technique I did earlier. Control the threshold and the range until it feels good without basically stepping on my S's. Here we go. This is what this sounds like. Let me solo. I'm from the six. I carry a stick. Security detail all look like John Wick. My wrist is an ocean of VVs all drip. My pen is a potion. The labels all blitz. Do me like the rose and get close to the top and then flip. It's Cool. That feels pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and let's get our parallel chain going. This one is a pretty dry vocal. So with that said, I just want to add a little bit of something just to kind of get it to peak in. I don't really want this to be super, super wet. So I'm going to use H reverb and I'm going to dial this all the way down to a pretty short, like one and a half second. And then that should probably be enough. I'm from the six. I carry a stick. Security detail all look like John Wick. My wrist is an ocean of VVs all drip. My pen is a potion. The label's all and we can just tuck that in real, real low. We don't need that in there much at all. And then again, I'm just gonna add a little bit of filtering. I'll just kind of pull up whatever the first Q plugin that comes up is. I don't really care either way. It's got kind of all the same to me. I just need to do some filtering. And then, uh, yep, that's pretty much it. I'm from the six, I carry a stick, security. 
And then the last thing that I want to add is a doubler similar to what we added earlier. But since it's not going to be so wide, I don't want it to be as thick. So I'm just going to add the doubler too. And then I'm just going to use their preset basic doubler, take out the direct, and then turn this down a little bit so it can kind of filter in. I'm from the six, I carry a stick. Security detail, I look like John Wick. My wrist is an ocean of VVs on drip. My pen. All right, that feels pretty good. It's pretty dry, but it still has a little bit of space. I'm from the six, I carry a stick. Security detail, I look like John Wick. My wrist is an ocean of VVs on drip. My pen. I want to add my last little thing. And again, we're going to add that EQP last in the chain. And this is just going to give me a little bit of extra low end without giving us some crazy, crazy mids. And then it's just going to let us boost the top end and attenuate that kind of high mid. So we can get a little bit of air without it getting super crackly and, and kind of sibilant. So let's dial this in. I'm from the six. I carry a stick. Security detail all look like John Wick. My wrist is an ocean of VVs on drip. My pen is a potion. The labels all blitz. Do me like the rose and get close. It's honest. Cool. Let's try this out and uh, let's see how this works in the mix. Now, again, I'm going to have macros here. So if you don't want as much air, or if you want more mids, or if you want more or less reverb, you can kind of do all of that. But as a starting point, let's see how this is. I'm from the six. I carry a stick. Security detail all look like John Wick. My wrist is an ocean of VVs on drip. My pen is a potion. The labels all blitz. Do me like the rose and get close to the top and then flip. It's honestly making me sick. My neck is still frozen. I feel like LeBron for chips. I'm back to back with this shit. I'm from the six, I carry a stick. Security detail, all look like John Wick. My wrist is an ocean of VVs on drip. My pen is a potion, the labels all blitz. Do me like the rose and get close to the top and then flip. It's on it. Honestly, that feels pretty good. Let's give it one more listen. I'm from the six, I carry a stick. Security detail, all look like John Wick. My wrist is an ocean of VVs on drip. My pen is a potion, the labels all blitz. Do me like the rose and get close to the top and then flip. It's honestly making me sick. My neck is still frozen, I feel like LeBron for chips. I'm back to back with this shit. All right, there you go. That's how I like to dial in my vocal chains. It's just kind of setting it up with EQ, compression, sculpting it out. And then it's really about what kind of effects do I want? Do I want slapback delay, long delay, short delay? Do I want a big reverb? Um, am I gonna add a doubler? Those are all the things that you can kind of go through in your vocal mixing process. But in terms of like setting compression, setting EQ, we went over a lot of those basics. So again, your parameters are gonna change depending on your vocal, the vocalist, the actual mic chain that they're using, the register that they sing in, the song that they're singing in. But no matter what those kind of changing parameters are, if you can follow the same kind of mindset when you're mixing a vocal of control dynamics, uh, control areas of the frequency range that are kind of an issue and enhance areas of the frequency range where it might be really nice to kind of add a little bit of boost. And then other than that, control sibilance, get your spatial effects how you want. You should be good to go. Like I said, if you want to download any of the presets, I will have a link to my Studioverse profile down below. So if you use any of these Wave plugins or if you buy any of these plugins from their website or if you use their subscription program, you can just open these right up. It's really, really easy. So literally all you have to do is have the uh, Wave Studio rack open and then you can just go to waves.com, find that Studioverse plugin and you can literally just drag it and drop it into here. Or you can always click here and you can search online and... Uh, you know, very similar to like other kind of AI searching programs, you can search for exactly what you want. So if you need a hip hop vocal, you can type it in, you'll have a bunch here. So if you're not using Studio Rack by Waves, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Definitely go check it out. Other than that, I do just want to say thank you so much to Waves for sponsoring us again. If you want to download these, go download it. Go check out all of the deals that Waves is offering for Black Friday and through November. Other than that, let us know what videos you want to see in the near future. We upload every single Friday, so make sure that you subscribe to us because we are always putting out fire content for you guys. And other than that, I'll see you next week with another tutorial. Much love, everyone. Peace.